Hello and welcome to Sunday Encore, where we have candid conversations about the practical applications of Sunday's message. Well, we are back for another episode of Sunday Encore, where we sit down and talk to recall the truths of Sunday's message and consider some practical applications to our everyday lives. If this podcast has been an encouragement or a blessing to you, we'd love to encourage you to share it with a friend or give us a like or a five-star rating. If you are watching or listening on YouTube, you can go ahead and subscribe for more encouraging uh, content. That would be a great uh, benefit to you, but if you would be so kind as to share, that would greatly help us continue to share the message of Jesus together as always. I am one of your hosts, Spencer, and across the table I have Adam with me. Here we go now. It is awesome. We officially wrapped up our series on the book of James, which has been absolutely awesome. It mm-hmm. has been incredible to see the themes going through each and every week. It's been incredible to for those of you that listened in person to just even just stand and read the scriptures together and actually like we all, we, there was chunks of passages, but we basically read through the book of James together as a church and just yeah. got the themes from it. It's so beautiful. Yeah, man, we could have stayed in this book another six weeks if we wanted to. There was so a much. There's so Why much. not? <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Uh, there's so much in there, and we kind of tried to pull out the themes uh, that resonated with us in the season we're in right now. But the, yeah, like James is rich in content, again, yeah. easy to read, harder to live out. Um, but again, one of these books that we should be reading or could be reading um, regularly mm-hmm. and, and just kind of allowing, instead of just reading it, but allowing it to read us as we hold our life up in reflection to it. Yeah. Where do we need to grow? Where do we need to surrender again? Mm-hmm. Where do we need to stretch? Where do we need to operate in faith? Where do we need to shut up? You know, yeah, yeah. just be quiet a little bit longer. And um, yeah, I was talking to a friend about a different book that kind of applies to this. It's like almost you read it once through. And pick like one thing to apply and like work at it for a while. It'd be like, okay, now I'm going to read it again and pick another thing to apply and just yeah. kind of keep working through it. I think it. that's the beautiful part of, of our faith with Christ is that it's we're always growing. Totally. You know, there's never a, you know, on this side of heaven, there's never I've achieved it or I've, I've succeeded. There's always there's always another thing to, to, to strengthen. There's another mm-hmm. thing to develop. There's another thing to refine. There's another thing to surrender. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, James is again speaking to these issues. And so... Um, yeah, so lots, lots to talk about as we totally. work through, uh, work through this book. But um, yeah, it was. It's been a good. It's been a good it's been run. A great series. Yeah, I've found it so encouraging for me personally. Mm. My faith. A lot of again practical application to to actually try to live out. Right. Walk through. It's been awesome. So yeah, it's been great. We. Uh, this is part five. Six. Part six that we wrapped up last week on James chapter five. Mm -hmm. And we talked primarily about prayer. Yeah. I love how James kind of wraps up the whole letter. Right. um, In prayer. Mm -hmm. You know, like he's talking about some pretty hefty. Yeah. What a beautiful thought. You know, and so he starts off the book recognizing that, hey, um, he's speaking to a people who are scattered, who are facing trials and temptations. And that kind of theme really is the the foundation to really everything that he's writing. So there's going to be trials and temptations externally, and there's going to be trials and temptations internally. Right. You know, you're going to be there's you're going to struggle. Living the faith is is challenging, especially in the season that they, that the author was writing this mm-hmm. to, their persecution, imprisonment, even worse, you know, and, you know, people being whipped and murdered and martyred rather for their faith and so there's there's some external pressures, yeah. you know, and then that creates a little bit of internal temptation yeah. to give in, you know, be a little bit maybe subtle or a little quote unquote secret sensitive, you know, yeah. in our language. We want to kind of, we don't want to stand out too much. And, and, uh, and so he's speaking to people. So everything he talks about when it comes to even just, you know, our, the, the way we speak, how we listen to the word of God and applying it to our life, how we, how the how our faith is put into action through blessings and cursings about our neighbor, even our pride and humility of our yeah. need for God and our relationship with others and our surrender to him and trusting in his process of correction in our life. Like all of these things really are based out of this idea that, hey, there's there's a lot that we can do. There's a lot that we should be doing. Mm-hmm. But I love how he ends it by saying, 
but there's only so much you can do. Yeah. If you really want to live this Christian, like you got, you got to have that relationship with God, yeah. you know? And so when we picked up in James, you know, James chapter five, we started in verse 13 where he's really, it's like, if you're in trouble, pray. If you're sick, pray. If you're, if you're happy, sing songs of praise, yeah. you know? Like he's just basically saying, you, you need to develop this relationship that you would have with your best friend that when things are going really great, you tell them. When things are going hard, you tell them. When, when you, you're excited to share something, that's to the person you call. Yeah. Like you need that type of relationship with God so that, you know, he's not just the guy you call to like a genie in a bottle sort of situation, but he's the one you talk to always, you know, right. pray without ceasing, just living this life of where you're just talking to him all the time. Yeah. And he's kind of, you know, we kind of landed on this point where it's, you know, prayer is the difference between the best that I can do and the best that God can do. Totally. Meaning that there is, there is a limit to the level of effort or the limit to the level of outcome that I can produce. Spiritual outcome, like lasting eternal outcome, right? And so we love to say this, you know, we're going to work like it depends on us, mm-hmm. but we're going to pray like it all depends on God. Yeah. And I think that is really the, the marriage what James is talking about. Because again, he's not, remember, we're going back to faith and works. Like he's not saying you got to work for your salvation, but I mean, God has given us a, a he's given us purpose. He's given us a task. And so oh. we got to work for it. We got we to roll up our sleeves. We got to do the thing that he's called us to. To do, we got to work like it depends on us. We got to show up on time. We got to give it our best effort. We got to prepare ourselves. We got to, you know, study and be advanced and, and hone our skills. And there's a level of work that we should be doing. Mm. But for eternal value and eternal purposes, we also need to be then praying. Yeah. <laughs> because unless God shows up, it's just going to be another event or it's just going to be totally. another thing. Yeah. And uh, we, don't, we don't need another thing. Yeah. We need something supernatural. Yeah. Um, we need to actually make. We need to move beyond just the external into the heart, into the spirit of people. And so, yeah. um, so this is this relationship. But again, it comes through prayer, it comes through that sense of relationship of working like it all depends on us, but then praying like it all depends on God. It's really James is ending his letter with this call to full dependency, full dependency on God. Yeah. You know, is and that not what prayer is? <laughs> that's what prayer is, yeah. right? It's just like, it's just realigning and really humbling ourselves again, right? Submitting ourselves to pride, like getting that stuff out of the way, humbling ourselves to recognize our need for God to show up in the situation, and um, and that's the kind of the journey that He is bringing us on in that last part. So we kind of talked about prayer. We spent you know the greater part of our message just talking about what prayer looks like, and we kind of landed on these three thoughts that will just sort of help ground our conversation. One is that prayer puts our unknown future into the hands of an all-knowing God. You know, yeah. so again, we don't know what tomorrow holds. There's, I mean, now more than ever, it feels like the I mean, uncertainty is everywhere. We know so much information, but we can't do anything with it most yeah. of the time. And uh, it just leads so much uncertainty, so much chaos. But we serve a God who knows today, tomorrow, and to the, he knows the end. You know, well, we don't know what tomorrow holds. We know who holds tomorrow. Yeah. And so we can just rest in this idea um, that we don't have to worry. You know, Jesus tells us, don't worry about anything, but pray about everything, yeah. right? Don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow's got enough worry of itself. So worry is a is a pride-filled, inward-focused uh, kind of motive that relies on us to solve the issue. So we're worried about our inability to actually solve the problem. Right. Where worship is this outward-focused, humble response that relies on God to resolve the issue. So it's often been said that worship is worry in reverse, right? right? So we're not worrying about something. We're going to worship God through trusting that he knows tomorrow. And it doesn't mean that it doesn't take all the pressure off ourselves, but he gives us a peace and a guidance and a direction to know what to do and when to do it. Yeah. And I think there's that, again, it comes down to that relationship. You're just in that constant conversation mm-hmm. with God. And so kind of the big idea we were saying with this is like, what if, what if prayer, and here's the, the big question, like what if prayer was our first response and not our last resort yeah you know a lot of us you know jesus says you know seek first the kingdom of god and his mm-hmm. righteousness but a lot of us are like well i'm gonna seek everything else first and then i'll seek then i'll pray about it yeah you know and we call it being diligent or we, we have some language we're wise you know we're being good we're just being we're being good parents if we're you know we're gonna call the doctor first and i'm not saying you don't call the doctor i'm not saying you yeah. don't do all those things yeah. but but if our first response is always an earthly solution, yeah, um, then I don't know. I just feel like we're we're just we're we're missing out on the relationship that God wants to have with us. Mm-hmm. Like, 
how do we pray about that? Give, and at, even at, at the very least, what he's going to do, he's going to give you a sense of peace mm-hmm. that passes all understanding. Mm-hmm. So as you go through the process of doctors, as you go through the process of treatment, as you go through the process of navigating what to do on the other side of the crisis, yeah. you have a peace about it. Yeah. And I believe God even gives you wisdom. James talks about that. If you have wisdom, just ask, and God will give it to you freely without finding fault. Like He gives that stuff to you as you navigate through the steps. Totally. And uh, I think we, we rob ourselves of that peace, of that wisdom, of the hope, of the mm-hmm. joy, of the community we have through fellowship of, of the believers, and we're kind of worrying about it ourselves, and we're dying a slow death. Yeah. You know? and so prayer puts our unknown future into the hands of an all-knowing God. That's very good. Uh, then prayer puts our hopeless situation into the hands of an all-powerful God. So not does he know all things, but he's all-powerful. He is all-powerful. And I know there's a lot of questions about the all the the omnipotence of God, you know, but he's powerful. He's, he knows all things and he's in all things. And, you know, just because he's all powerful doesn't mean he shows up in every situation. Sometimes his all power is just trusting, you know, like having to let things ride out in a certain season and we don't fully understand it, but God is, he's faithful. He's able to provide all things. He's able to show all things. He knows all things. And, you know, we were talking about this idea how, you know, it's never too late for God who raises the dead because, you know, a lot of ourselves, we have hopeless situations, right? Like if we're mm. if we're going to be honest, like many of us today feel like it's not looking very hope filled. The future, right? Like it seems kind of hopeless, and you know we we can buy into the cultural lie or the cultural narrative that like it this whole world is falling apart. Yeah, you know the world is falling apart. We're all part of the problem. There's no real solution. The solution just seems like a hail mary at best. And it can feel hopeless. You can get inundated by this stuff. And I believe we serve a God who, even to the very last moment, the story of Lazarus, you know, Mary and Martha are sending word to their, their brother sick. And he just sits and he doesn't do anything with it. He just waits and he shows up a couple days later. His brother's now dead. The brother's dead. But he's not worried about it. He says, okay, come forth. Like, it's, it was hopeless. Yeah. But not for Jesus it wasn't. Yeah. Yeah, like humanly speaking, all things seem impossible. Yeah. But with God, all things are possible. That's and right. so, you know, I think we just, when we, again, when we're in that relationship through prayer and understanding of God, it doesn't, again, it just gives us hope in what seems to be a hopeless situation. Mm-hmm. It allows us to cling on to that. And so we can realize that we can hold on to it. I love how, you know, Paul references Abraham, who, like, there was no reason for hope. Like, he was old. Right. God gave him a promise. And he was now 100 years old. There was no reason for him for hoping, but Abraham kept on hoping. Yeah, you know, like He never wavered in believing God's promise. He was fully convinced that God was able to do whatever he promises. And what would it be like for us to just have that type of tenacious faith? Mm-hmm. Just keep on hoping. Just keep on hoping. God, you said you're going to be, you said you're going to fulfill it. You said you're going to complete what you started. You know, you said you'll never leave us nor forsake us. Like, you just hold on to the promise of God. We're not just holding on to wishful thinking. Totally. Right? I think this is why it goes back to we need to know the word. What does the yeah. word of God say? Like, yeah. not just what we think it should say or what we hope it should say. Right. No, what does it actually say? That's what we're holding on to. That's the hope in which we found, yeah, right? It's absolutely. the hope. It's an anchor for our soul, right? When do you need an anchor? You need an anchor in a storm. Yeah. Right? You need an anchor so you don't go sailing away and go floating away. Like, it's it's the anchor for our soul, and yeah, so good. Uh, so it's never too late for God who can raise the dead. And so for all of us, you know, no matter what situation you find yourself in, um, it's not too late. God could still move. God could still Absolutely. make a way. He could still use you. Yeah. And then the third one was we just understand that prayer puts our broken life in the hands of an all forgiving God. Mm-hmm. And again, this is this speaks to that person and to that individual. Who says I've you know I've screwed up too much. Mm-hmm. I mean I, I mean I I look at the the letter of James or I look at you know. I, as I apply this to my life, I'm like, I'm like so far away from this. My yeah. life is so broken. Um, but James tells us, you know, if we confess our sins, you know, he's, or John tells us rather, if you confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Mm-hmm. James, James encourages us to confess our sins to one another, you know, that we can find healing in that. There's yeah. an element of like healing and, and talking about our struggle and, and not professing it to everybody, but you need somebody. Yeah. We all need somebody who we can be a little more honest with someone who's going to listen to us, who's going to love us, but maybe even love us enough for us to hate them <laughs> as they speak yeah. truth back into us a little totally. bit. You know, don't just coddle us, but speak truth, encouragement and correction Absolutely. back into our life. 
Uh, I know you've had that person in your life, and I've had those people in my life, and in the moment, it's not awesome, but you know, you're a better person for that, right? Absolutely. And so, being able to confess and, and invite um, invite people into your heart, invite people into your life. So we were just that's what we were navigating, and this idea that prayer is important. Yeah. You know, we we it, it seems like such a simple thing. We going back to this idea: if we just read your Bible, pray every day. Like, my goodness, if we could just get a glimpse of the power of prayer, if we could get a fresh revelation of what prayer does, the conversation that it opens up, the relationship that it opens up, and not just speaking, but even just listening yeah. to the voice of God and um, receiving the peace that allows us to get through the trials and the temptations that we are facing and continue to face and will continue to face until Jesus comes back. Yeah. Um, you know, but prayer is the lifeline. Yeah. Yeah, it's this encouragement that's like no matter what kind of internal or external pressure you're facing, that there is an all-forgiving, all-knowing, all-powerful God that is readily available for you to present your needs and requests to him with the belief that it can actually change. Like he can actually do something about your situation. (laughs) Absolutely. And I think there's even what it does is it changes your perspective. It may not change the problem, but it will change your perspective. Totally. Totally. You know, because again, we're we've been in, I've been a follower of Jesus most of my life, and I've prayed prayers, and God didn't answer the prayer I was hoping He would answer. Mm-hmm. Or really, in a way, I should say that mm-hmm. He like I was, you know, I want you to move the mountain. Yeah, you know, and He didn't move the mountain, but He gave me perspective to see the mountain in a way that was going to strengthen me and, and you know help me grow in my relationship with Him. Yeah, or even if it's just like Paul, where he's just whispering, "My grace is sufficient for you; my mm-hmm. power is made perfect in your weakness." Like, you won't hear that unless you pray. Unless you pray. If you, like, you, yeah, okay, read the scriptures, that's great. But, like, in your situation, personally, present your request to your loving Father. And if just maybe his answer is, my grace is sufficient for you, my power is made perfect in your weakness, then at least you heard something to hold on to. Totally. You know? 100%. And I love that. I love how James references Elijah. Right, totally. Because it seems like this weird paragraph in verse five, in chapter five, but he's, he's it's like a hard right almost. Yeah, it's like, it's what, like, are you what, what are you? What, what's going on here? But he's 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 just sort of he's trying to paint the picture that Elijah, even though everyone, because he's speaking to a Jewish audience, everyone would have known who Elijah was. Oh, like yeah. this was like he's the guy. He Hall was super, He was Superman before yeah. Superman was even a thing. Totally. You know, like Elijah was the man. And everyone would have known about him. Everyone had known about the things that God used him to accomplish. And, and so everyone would have thought that he was super Christian, you know, super elite. <laughs> and James is breaking it down like, no, 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 no. He was just a man. He was just a man. I love that. He was just a man like you who just prayed. That's all he did. He prayed. <laughs> he was a man who prayed. And his faith, his prayer was faith-filled because he was in the word. He received a word from God, and he obeyed the word of God. Mm-hmm. And it comes back to me, like, if we're not in the Word of God, how do you get a word from God? Well, you read the Word of God. Yeah, totally. And it's, it's that simple. It is that, yeah. Like, God's not speaking to me. Yeah, are you sure? Open this book. Yeah. Like, I guarantee you, He will speak to your spirit. And how do you get a word? How do you develop faith? You read the Word of God. You get yeah. a word found in the Word. You build your faith. And then that faith then powers your prayers. Yeah. And and that's what James is kind of leading into. So let's listen. Elijah's not some superhero. He's just a man who prayed earnestly faithfully based on the word of god Mm -hmm. and i think if we can apply that to our life like when we we think about our parents or your grandparents or people you look up to as like superheroes of their faith you know like the difference between them is just that they prayed they were they were faithful they were diligent they they moved beyond just feelings you know our generation are so feeling oriented we're led by our feelings but feelings make horrible leaders yeah the great indicators of challenges, of struggles, of, totally. you know, of thing of of warnings, but they're horrible leaders. We do yeah. not follow our feelings you know? totally, and uh, but we're a generation who does that. Yeah, you know, we oh, I don't feel like it today. Yeah, you know, and and then then we don't do it. You know, and we do that regularly. Then we not we never be, we never actually become who we would desire to be, or we never yeah. accomplish what we desire to. Accomplish. Right. And so, you know, I love how James says, you know, takes a hard right, reminds people of Elijah. Hey, you can do this too. Yeah. You can do this too. And uh, lean on each other. But hey, be, just be prayerful. Pray earnestly, pray faithfully, pray consistently. And um, yeah, it's amazing what God can do through 
that submission of humility. Again, if you put it all together, I'm hearing the word of God, I'm doing the word of God. Yeah, yeah. I'm 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 receiving faith and I'm applying it into my actions. Right. I'm I'm I'm, I'm being cautious of what I say and what I speak because I understand there's power of life and death is in my to- is in the tongue and totally. I got to make sure I'm speaking positively and it's not wor- it's not like I'm speaking it to life but I'm sp- I'm guarding the things that I'm not killing it with yeah, my language either absolutely. you know and I'm I'm humbling myself mm-hmm. before the Lord right I'm gonna submit myself to His plan and I'm gonna pray I'm gonna pray I'm yeah. gonna pray just to get through I'm gonna pray to, to move beyond my limitations I can I'll, I'll do what I can do. But God, you're gonna to have to take and finish the leg. You yeah. have to finish the rest, and it's this constant theme. That's how you survive trials. That's how you totally. survive temptations. It's this constant thing, and it's a life cycle. This is like a thing we do regularly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like just an overarching theme that you kind of brought to life in week one of James that I think applies to all of these principles. Is that like if you don't quit, we win. Like if yeah. we don't quit, we win. Like if you were just faithful to do it, just, be, just keep, keep going, keep showing just up, keep showing up, just keep praying. You know, I love it. I just love like it. God's mercies are new every morning. I just I kind of remind myself that every day. His mercies are new every morning. Like this, I know yesterday I might not have yesterday might not have been the win I was hoping for. Totally right. Yeah, today's a new day. Yeah, His mercies are new every morning. Yeah, you know I'm going to receive grace for yesterday. Yeah, receive His mercy for today. I'm going to yeah. go at it. You know, totally. and uh, I just. Live it, live it every day and every moment in that in that same attitude as best as I can, and I mean I think that's the journey as us as we work out our salvation. Yeah, you know, like this is it's not going to be always easy. There are going to be days it's going to be easier for sure. We're going to have those days like that was like, we crushed that day. I felt yeah. like God was faithful and we were faithful and yeah. we were aligning with people around us and everything was good and we took some ground. And there's other days where you just feel like you're just hitting a wall. Yeah. And uh, and those are the days that you need the the, the discipline of prayer, the discipline exactly. of faithfulness, evidence in your life to get you through those moments, mm-hmm. right? Right. And um, so that's why it's really important. Yeah, you need to work that out. And maybe you're listening and have listened throughout James, and like we had mentioned in the point of an all-forgiving God, maybe you feel broken, maybe you feel like, hey, I'm not sure if I can do this. Like, it just seems too hard. Well, we have an incredible series coming up um, called Outcasts mm-hmm. that's going to be awesome. And it, if you're feeling that and kind of identifying as like, man, this just feels like too much, this series is for you yeah. because God can take whatever little you have and uh, use it in mighty and incredible ways and so go good. through certain characters and walk through that. But it's going to be awesome. I'm excited about yeah, it. I actually too. feel it, it's actually interesting. Like when James tells us to draw near to God, so that he'll draw near to us. Mm-hmm. And then you look at the people that Jesus drew near to. Yeah. You know, Jesus, like he was always surrounded by the cultural outcasts and the, you know, the ones who felt like they're on the outsiders, like the ones who felt like their past, their past problems or their present pain disqualifies them. From right, right, right. And he just surrounded himself with those people. Yeah. And, uh, and people responded. And I think there's something really beautiful about, um, about how Jesus sees those who look like they're not good enough mm-hmm. and his heart beats towards them. Yeah. You know? And so I, I'm excited to go through this series yeah, and me see too. kind of what we can apply from it. And just to kind of do a character study of some, some totally. pretty cool characters in the Bible. And it's going to be great. Yeah, it'll be super great. So we can encourage you to stay tuned, to listen, join us in person on Sunday or watch online wherever you're from. And it'll be an incredible series. And if you are a Sunday Encore listener, we'll see you next week as our first week for outcasts so we again thank you so much for joining us for sunday encore we pray that this sparks jesus-centered conversations in your home or small group as we continue to grow into an overflowing relationship with jesus 